Hi, this is Robert Herman, and this is the first of the StockCo Livestock Trading Updates brought to you by Mercado. There's a couple of things that are important with trading and uh, in assessing whether there's a value in a potential trade, and that's assessing risk and opportunities. Today we're going to talk about both of those, and uh, firstly, let's have a look at the opportunity. There's two things uh, with opportunities. One is the actual trade, which is identified later and talked about in detail then, but more importantly, the overview of the industry. So when we talk about sheep at the moment, there's a few factors that we'd like to bring to your attention. The first is the global population. And we know that the big population increases are going to come in Asia. In fact, over one third of the world's population lives in the uh, Asian region, and the growing population that are heading towards middle class is dominated by that area. So we're going to have more people with more money to spend. At the same time, we know that those people with more money to spend will spend it on meat proteins. That's their preferred option when wealth starts to emerge into those economies. So that puts us and the sheep industry in Australia in a really good position. The other final thing I'd say about this, the, bigger issue, the bigger position in terms of strategy is sheep numbers. Worldwide, we see sheep numbers declining. In Australia, they've virtually stabilised. But the big issue for us in terms of export is our major competitor, and that's New Zealand. New Zealand is going to, in the next few years, become the, uh, the lesser player in the industry compared to Australia. In the past, New Zealand sometimes dominated sheep exports. That's not going to be the case in the future. It's just not possible that they'll have the numbers to compete. We mentioned risk and opportunity. One of the things that's emerging in world agriculture, it's the dominance of China. And the sheep meat industry is not immune to that. We've seen in recent times that China has steadily been increasing its demand and purchases out of Australia. And at times we've seen them dominate that market. Last year there was a period where the, num the uh, volume of sheep meat was, was virtually all going towards China. Now this is a growing market and it's a market that's going to be increasingly felt by the sheep meat industry. In assessing opportunity, it's, uh, it's easy at the moment to come up with positive stories about sheep meat. One of those uh, um, positive aspects is the volume of sheep that are about uh, or the lack of it. And that's not going to grow quickly because we're coming off a low base. We're also coming in Australia, we're coming out of an era where the dominant, um, the winner if you like, in fighting for acres has been cropping. We're not seeing that, that change much. And in New Zealand, of course, the uh, dairy industry has been the, the big bear in that market. That's not changing much and it's not likely to change much in the short term. Again, that's showing or identifying some of the opportunity. So sheep numbers are going to be short, but also um, assessing some of the risk. So that low volume or that lower supply or at the best stable supply that we're going to see is giving us confidence that uh, the market is going to be able to hold somewhere around the levels that we've been seeing in recent times. Just last month, or towards the end of March, uh, Angus Brown produced a report on Mercado where he took the time to assess right there and then, in real time, what was the opportunity for trading sheep. And we'd seen one of the things with trading sheep is that markets change and in a sheep trade, it's possible that two markets can change. In this case, the uh, price of finished lambs had uh, remained solid, but the price of store lambs had fallen. When he had a look at this, he was easily able to identify some, some best case, uh, some likely and some worst case scenarios for somebody entering a trade. Now, while that dynamic changes all the time, it's important that that's the sort of discipline that's applied when making a trade. So we would encourage anybody who's first assessing whether or not they want to trade to then sit down with pen and paper and do the sums. Have a view of what price you're going to pay, understand what your cost of producing that lamb is going to be, and then factor in uh, a best, a worst, and, a, and an obvious case, or a most likely case, for where the price is going to be when you come to sell.
talking about opportunity again, and uh, and it seems like every time you talk about opportunity, there's an, an opposite to it, and that's the risk. The opportunity that we're seeing, or the growth that we're seeing in the land market in the last few years has been quite extraordinary. So normally what happens in a market is as supply increases, price declines, or as, uh, as supply decreases, prices rise. Since 2000, the lamb market and the sheep meat market has been a really interesting dynamic. It's not only shown increased supply, so increased numbers of stock coming to the market, but it's incrementally lifted in price. And you can see on the chart that we're putting up now is when the price and the uh, price moves to the right hand side and uh, supply moves up, then the whole dynamic of the market shifts up to the right hand corner of that chart. Now this is a, uh, it, it's showing that this market has actually got strong demand and extra supply is not going to hurt it or hasn't been hurting it. If we look to the future, we have a fairly good handle on what supply is going to be like and if that demand is consistent and that demand is solid, which we've no reason to think it's not, then we're going to have a lot of confidence that the price of sheep meat and the price of lamb into the future is going to hold solid. So this first uh, Stockco livestock trading outlook has talked more in general terms about the strategies you should, in place, should, should put in place. And most farmers who've been in the game for a while will know that it's all very well to have theoretical models and, and price estimates and strategies, but in the end it's about managing that trade yourself. And that's the important starting point. You need to have the capacity to feed and water, and even more than that, to add weight to the livestock that you're trading. Once that's confirmed, then the uh, analysis work can begin. So what is the price you've got to have to pay for those stock? What's your cost of their weight gain? And we can help you in determining a range of prices that you're likely to have into the future based on our analysis. So having the ability to feed, uh, having the model, putting the finance in order and, and using uh, stock code to facilitate that can set you up for a pretty sound trading strategy. In the end though, we believe that, and our underlying message here, is that the sheep industry in its current environment is showing more opportunity than risk. That doesn't help farmers who have, have production risk, but in terms of the market, we're thinking that the future for the sheep market outlook is very strong. That's it from Mercado and the Stock Co Livestock Outlook. We'll talk to you next time.